Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today is Tuesday, and Tuesday means an exciting new update for Medieval Engineers, and you're probably wondering what you'll be getting your hands on in this week's patch. Well, I have to say, it's quite exciting. We've got some alterations to the destruction and the damage system of the actual blocks and stones around us, as well as a new rope drum block being added to the game. So first off, I'll actually show you some of this new damage system. So we're going to go to the character tools, we'll select ourselves a, let's get a mace for instance in this case, and we're going to actually swing it at this wooden block in front of us. Now, we need to pay attention and just notice how these blocks are having an actual damage states. You can see that as I've damaged it, I've impacted it, it's not just broken like it would previously, it's got this impact mark of where I've actually hit it. So if we hit it somewhere higher up there, let's see what happens. You can see it's a little bit Obviously, of course, early stages as it's gone into multiple sort of different sorts of damage. And the more I swing at this, the more these blocks will actually weaken. And if I focus on one specific point, I should be able to break this wood. You can see how it's chipped and actually it's come apart there. Now, obviously, different materials are going to have different sorts of strengths. So I could be swinging all day at this rock. I might be able to damage it in the impact point, but I just have to keep swinging constantly or maybe even fire a bigger weapon to actually do considerable damage to this stone block. Now, you've also got these blocks here. Now, these are the combination of like a housing sort of building block. We've got wood and we've got stone. And you can see as we impact this, we're trying to damage it. It's going to be weaker than the stone block, but it's not as weak as the actual wood. So this sort of sort of levels of damage, you could say, is a big thought thing for the future. And it's going to make a lot of difference then. So you can see it's broken in half now and we've separated that from each other. So the next thing I want to do is actually fire a few different cannonballs at these stone blocks to show you how the damage affects them from different angles. So we're going to get the G menu up. We're going to select a large projectile. We've also got the small projectile. So if I find the small at it, you'll notice that it's just having that impact mark, but it's not really doing a large amount of damage. And it would take a lot of these smaller projectiles to actually damage it. And as you can see here, if we switch up to power of the seven, the larger projectile, and we fire one of these at it, you can, see, you can still see it has a lot of power behind that wall. Oh, well, behind the ball itself. But if I angle myself against the wall and still fire it, you'll notice how the damage state is actually preserving a lot of the actual energy and it's deflecting it back out towards them blocks over there. But still, if I hammer on at the same point, it's going to eventually crack and weaken that wall, even if I am at this angle. You can see how as I move around this wall and I keep firing these balls at different angles, it gets to a point where the angle does not actually affect the penetration of the projectile and it penetrates in and explodes out. And I'll show you this here. I'm going to fire one straight on and then fire one from the side. So here's one from the side. You can see it bounces off. That's at maximum power. And now here's one direct from the front. So it's really cool that they've actually modeled this, this sort of projectile and the angle in making the blocks thicker and harder to penetrate. These are some ramp blocks and these don't really have too much effect as you see as they ramped, but they're not actually modeled as that sort of feature just yet, but maybe that'll be added in the future. Now, the second block that was added that's really cool is this new rope drum, and it works by engaging and disengaging a number of pins. So I'm gonna disengage the pins here, and you'll notice the catapult's gonna fire. And as I disengage the pins, you can see how the rope drum can actually free, well, spin freely on that sort of axis, releasing the rope, but at the same time, making it so you don't have to cut the rope to launch the catapult. So it means that you can actually recover and return the catapult a lot faster. So I'm just gonna re-engage my teeth into the actual rope drum. And then we're gonna head back over here and shift click. And we actually bring that back into place and we can fire ourselves another sort of ball at the target. But there is some drawbacks and some advantages to this thing. So if I go onto the menu here by pressing K, you can see the rope drum actually has a menu when it's aimed at. And it has a minimum length and a maximum length. So at a maximum, it can go all the way up to 70 meters. And if we bring it back down to 40, you can see the minimum length is 0 0.7. Now this brings a few little problems. So just to pay attention to that distance between the rope there, and let's actually have a look at the distance between the rope here. Since that has a minimum length, it means it can't come as tight towards the rope drum as the original one. So it means that you're gonna have a little bit more distance and you can't crank that little bit of extra power out your catapult. But still, if you place that rope drum further away, then they have the advantage that brings of this locking mechanism instead of having to do the original method of rehooking it up every time you fired. 
and you can see how much longer that process actually adds to it as well as using it on a number of other machines so here in front of us we have a really basic drawbridge you can see how we've got two rope drums hooked up to two pulley points and it's as simple as raising and lowering this system as winding it backwards and forwards so we can lower it by holding shift t and we can lower that all the way down to the ground level you can see there's a bit of bounce a bit of spring in the rope but once it's lowered down to the bottom it works perfectly as a drawbridge but there is some problems with this if i remove this holding block that is holding this drawbridge into position it will fall below that point if i'm not careful as well as it could smash down into the ground and that's why this new drawbridge sort of rope drum has got all the features i need to stop that from happening now, an important thing to notice when you're installing this new rope drum is that it's a little bit bigger than the original. It's actually two blocks longer. So as you can see, the difference between the two blocks, and we can actually click that into place. And now we have all the access to these cool little locking features that are perfect for a drawbridge. So now the drawbridge has been risen into the upper position. We have a number of little features with this rope drum that we can use to lower it a lot faster and a lot quicker without the risk of actually the drawbridge breaking when it impacts the ground. And the first thing I'll show you is if you access it with K, you'll notice I talked a little bit about this movement maximum length before. And if we lower that maximum length down, let's say to three meters or two meters, and I press OK, make sure to press OK and not escape or else it won't save. And then all you have to do is disengage this and it should drop to that set height. So you can see it's actually dropped down to that set height and I can actually change this. So let's change that to um, say, let's give us um, seven meters of rope and it'll drop down to where seven meters of rope is. And I've accidentally pressed escape twice and it's dropped down there. So you can see it's dropped down to this level without just swinging all the way down to the bottom and snapping off like it would if you didn't have this said feature. So I can't wait to see what you guys are gonna do with this and I'll see you next time.